In this video tutorial, I'll be creating a finite element analysis model of a cantilevered I-beam and this time I'll be using uh, shell elements to model this. The beam is fixed to a wall rigidly at the left hand. There is gravity applied and there is a uniform distributed load of 1 kN per meter at the beginning. And there is also a tip load of 10,000 newtons acting downwards. Uh, we can look at the beam cross section property at uh, 200 mm high and 100 mm wide with a thickness of 10 mm for the flange and web sections. We can calculate the area, the second moment of area, and then use engineer's beam bending method and calculate um, our validation stresses. I will start the modeling by creating a sketch and extruding it to give me a 3D model. So if I click on extrude, I can start sketching my cross section. I'll just exaggerate the dimensions at the beginning. Um, this is just uh, defining the cross section section roughly and I just need to then go and edit these dimensions to create my sketch so I know the top width is 100 millimeters and the web is 10 millimeters wide the bottom is also 100 millimeters and I can create another dimension this is 10 millimeters, and the top and bottom are taken as equal. That's an automatically defined constraint as I sketch. So that dimension is um, 90 millimeters, and also that dimension is 90 millimeters, and I can make that. 5 millimeters to center the web and also make that 50 millimeters to center all the cross section. So I need to delete a couple of segments so I can click this line and this line and that creates my top connection and deleting these lines will give me the um, cross section of the I-beam and I think all the dimensions are accurately defined here so if I extrude this that will give me my I-beam in 3D so I'll need to extrude for 2 meters 2000 millimeters so that's effectively my solid model of the I-beam so I can zoom in it's a solid definition of the I-beam. Now, we can do an FEA of the solid model, and that will be a highly detailed model, but um, we have already done a beam element um, representation, idealization of this. So this time, I'll create a shell idealization of this I-beam model. Um, the first thing I want to do, first of all, yeah, is to define an area at the top where I can apply my uniform distributed load. So that was applied for the thousand millimeters from the tip to the middle of the beam. So I need to define uh, somehow a split surface here. So I can do that within simulate. I can go to simulate and refine model and I can uh, define a surface region and that surface region requires if I click here a sketch I can click define and I can select this top surface to define my sketch so if I click sketch I'm sketching on that top surface so all I need to define to split that surface into two is a simple line that is um, um, parallel to the um, yeah, 
just parallel to this axis. So that line is enough to um, split my model at the top surface. Just need to define this as 1000 millimeters from the base and the length of this doesn't matter at this stage uh, as long as it is long enough um, I can use it. So I can say OK to this and if I go back to my references again so the sketch is defined I need to select the surface I just need to select the top surface here and now you can see that it's automatically split that into two so I click OK and now I've got one surface area here and another surface area here so the top surface is divided into two and this surface area on the right I can use to define my apply my uniform distributed load uh, the next thing to do here is to define the shell pairs so we'll convert this into a shell idealized, idealized structure so if you go to shell pair under uh, this toolbar we can select top and bottom surfaces so the top surface is these two and uh, I can select my part material as low carbon and and the placement of the shell will be at the mid surface that's fine I can press OK so that will be my first shell pair and I need to define my second shell pair uh, click on the shell pair again and if I click on this surface it picks the out outside opposite surface as well automatically and again mid surface is selected and press OK to accept this. So that's my second idealization. So that's on the left side seen as shell pairs. And I need to do the same for the bottom flange. So again go to shell pair and select the bottom surface. And again that selects the, the two surfaces at the top of the bottom flange as well. And if I go to part material low carbon as well just to define that, so that's OK as well. So that's my shell pairs defined here. If I want, I can go back and edit and, and check. And for example here, I'll change that material to low carbon again. So these are all editable after you've created. So these are the uh, shell pairs. Effectively, rather than creating solid elements, these are going to these shell pairs will create shell elements for these defined uh, areas of the model. So next bit is to create some controls on element size. I'll do a, a rough mesh, so I can select some surfaces. Um, for example, some of these surfaces will be selected to say. Um, there's an element of maximum, let's say, 50 millimeter side length. So press OK. And if I go to AutoGem and create, that gives me about 746 elements. So that is the P elements and on each element each side can be up to ninth order polynomial in Creo in Creo Simulate so uh, that's still a fairly refined mesh so we can save the mesh and the next bit is to apply our boundary conditions the first thing I want to do is add a displacement constraint so displacement and I want to fix the left end fully so translations are going to be fixed at this end. If I had edges of the shells defined, I could also fix them in um, rotation directions as well. But in this case, it's not going to matter that much. So press OK. And the next load set is, um, first of all, creating a, a force at the tip. Let's say at that surface and I want to create a force of 
minus 10,000 newtons and um, I'll give this a, a tip load name and I'll create a new load set for it called tip load and um, that's the forces applied we can preview it it's going in the right direction so press OK uh, the next is we can create a gravity for example so we can click on gravity and I'll apply it with a name called simply gravity and load set I'll name this as gravity as well press OK and my gravity is acting on the Z direction so I'll apply it in terms of meters per second square so let's change that to 9.81 and press OK well it's acting in the positive direction so I need to edit it actually so if I go to gravity and then edit I need to put a negative in front of it so it acts downwards that will give me the correct response in my model so I've, g I've defined my gravity I've defined my tip load and I also need to define a uniform distributed load so I can do that under again force and by giving it a name of UDL and then create a new load set of UDL press OK and the references to the surface is the split surface that I've just created at the beginning and the value in the Z direction is going to be minus 1000 newtons that's minus 1000 newtons preview that's acting in the right direction on the right surface so press OK and effectively that's all the loads and constraints defined for my model I can delete this unnecessary load set so there are three load sets and one constraint set and now I'm ready to solve this model make sure we save this and save it often because Creo may still crash and you might be left without any uh, of your work uh, saved so to solve this I need to go to analysis and studies define a new static analysis um, and you can give it any name you want but just leave it as default in this case I need to solve it for all the three load cases load sets I'll leave the sum load sets unchecked so I can sum them in the results viewer I want to go to multipass adaptive elements up to ninth order polynomial and 5% convergence press OK and I'm ready to solve this click start solution and just say yes yes to interactive diagnostics and if I click on this button I can actually see um, how the analysis is progressing so it's doing pass 1 at the moment which is finished quite quickly it tells you how many um, uh, number of equations it's got by increasing each in each pass it's increasing the number of um, edges with higher order polynomials and creating more and more equations so each pass may, might take longer and longer as it progresses but this time just three passes was enough to solve this so let's close this and then go and look at our results in the results because I've defined three separate load sets I can scale them and I can choose to include or uninclude them so first of all a fringe plot of the von Mises stress on these shell elements and I want to see the form shape with element edges and overlay of the undeformed so OK and show and we can see that the Z direction was our vertical direction here 
so all the load were applied on the negative z direction so the beam is bending in the right direction so that's correct and the maximum stress I'm getting for Mises stress is 128 and if you zoom in to the um, fixed region of the I-beam you can see that it's, um, it's a stress concentration at the corners of these elements which have a very rigid displacement boundary condition applied they have this uh, maximum stress concentration value so uh, next thing you can do is look at bending stress in this case that will be the X stress and you can also use dynamic query and that shows you that the maximum stress there is about 92, 96 something like that and the uh, root of the beam and we can close that another thing that's useful is sometimes these stress concentrations might dominate your model and then you don't really see these fringe patterns so you can go to format and edit and you can change the values in your contour plot so for example you can say choose to plot maximum of let's say 80 uh, to minus 80 I'm just doing this randomly here and then I can press enter um, make sure you enter after you enter the number so preview and this creates a, a more well-defined contours you can change different um, types of spectrum you can create grayscales, hue scales uh, different color sets etc fatigue for a fatigue analysis etc but structural set looks fine so we can press ok so these are our bending stresses and these are remember for all the three combined load sets and we can still go back to home and edit our uh, results for example if you wanted to scale our uniform distributed load if you wanted to apply 2000 newtons per meter I can scale that by 2 just the UDL result and it will sum them again and then I can say OK and show and this will be shown for the scaled up result for UDL this is a linear elastic analysis I can um, do a superposition of all these different load cases and sum them so this will conclude our finite element analysis of the cantilever beam problem using the shell element idealization.